Thanks, Dottie. <clears throat> As Dottie mentioned, uh, one of the important parts of your campaign is your endorsements. So tonight we have with us the guy that kind of holds the keys to the kingdom of Marin, and <laughs> that's uh, Brad Breithoff. <laughs> Come on, you do hold. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, explanation for the, uh, or my description of my presentation says uh, critical endorsement. And um, I'm not sure how critical it is. Uh, I'd like to say that we, uh, we, you know, everybody we endorse wins, but uh, that's not the case. And it's also uh, not sort of the, uh, prevailing reason why we endorsed some candidates. In fact, I remember uh, when we endorsed a Republican candidate running for state senate against Carol Migdon when she first ran, um, mainly because during the editorial board meeting, uh, the assemblywoman then, who was running for state senate, um, got up and started to walk out because the Republican candidate um, said that she had some responsibility for the state's uh, poor financial conditions because she was the chair of the assembly budget committee and she felt that was a low blow and the members of the editorial board looked at each other and were going no that's fair <laughs> and uh, she turned around and sat back down and it was just you know we just felt that that was uh, i guess uh, such a display of uh, of uh, trying to avoid uh, uh, the issues that we endorsed the Republican who was from Kentfield um, and uh, he, he didn't have a, a prayer of winning but uh, we made that endorsement the press Democrat made that endorsement I think that maybe the Cron and the uh, and uh, some of the other papers did as well and um, but uh, we don't go out and try to pick pick the winners um, uh, my my presentation tonight is basically to tell you why some of you might be hearing from me in the, over the next two weeks. Um, a lot of papers have uh, sort of uh, gone to uh, question and answer um, format where they send out uh, questionnaires to uh, candidates and ask them to fill them out and then they take them back and they digest them and figure out who they're going to endorse. Um, uh, there are others that uh, there are some papers that used to endorse that don't endorse at all any longer um, and it's mainly because believe me it's very time consuming but uh, the IJ is committed to uh, interviewing as many candidates in person as possible and uh, over the past I guess I've been doing this for 15 years uh, we've endorsed we've uh, met with everybody from um, uh, recreation district boards to uh, congressional candidates and we met them in, in person uh, sometimes we meet them uh, individually and sometimes uh, uh, we bring them all together at the same time so anyway over the next two weeks you'll probably the candidates will probably be getting a call from me uh, to meet with the IJ editorial board and uh, it's not as bad as it might sound because there are some veterans here who've survived it um, and the members of the uh, members of the editorial board include uh, the publisher David Rounds, our executive editor Doug Bennell, and uh, myself. We have a public member who's uh, Fran White. Um, a, uh, a, she she's usually invited to attend. Uh, Dick Spotswood sits in on some of them, or our columnist, and an IJ reporter also is always invited to sit in. Uh, only the members, the three members of the IJ staff are involved in making the decision. Uh, the sessions are on the record and they're frequently covered by reporters. Uh, and it's mainly sort of an informal uh, roundtable discussion. Uh, we will, um, the candidates are asked to open with a sort of like who you are and why are you running because sometimes we don't know who they are. Um, and then uh, and we also always like to know why they're running and what issues uh, they put on the top of their agenda and then uh, we ask them questions and generally it's the um, 
same question. Every candidate gets a chance to answer every question, and uh, there's sometimes follow-up questions, and then I try to interject some humor and sometimes some pointed questions. Um, but um, it, it's survivable, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour, wouldn't you say, Greg? Um, it's important if you would, uh, when you show up, bring your campaign materials, uh, you know, any brochures you have, but in particular bring your endorse list of endorsements. I do pay attention to endorsements. I pay attention to find out who's on there, and I also pay attention to who's not on there. And I pay attention to uh, sort of like, uh, uh, what's a good example? When uh, a candidate has some endorsements that bridge some gaps, we pay attention to those. Uh, the timing, we'll, we'll try to get our endorsements done by May 10th, but um, that's always our goal, and sometimes we, we succeed, but you can tell that uh, a lot of times the, the more difficult uh, endorsements take a little longer. Like, uh, for instance, I think like two years ago, we were wrestling with the, um, I think it was the assessor's race, up until probably the, uh, the Friday before Election Day. Um, it, was a, if it, it was a difficult race to uh, figure out who, who we thought was the best candidate. Um, also, um, we accept letters to the editor supporting candidates, and if you've been reading the IJ, I think you've already seen some in the judges' race um, and in the congressional race. Uh, we try to even them out. But uh, I guess a good example was the Obama-McCain uh, um, race, where um, the, um, the uh, small but dedicated McCain forces in Marin County kept complaining that we were running all these Obama letters. Uh, and Obama wound up getting something like 79% of the, the Marin County votes. So we don't try to like alter it. But we run them as they come in, and we try to make sure that uh, um, uh, all sides get uh, represented, but we don't uh, we don't let one candidate just create this deluge. But we do they they do reflect the number of letters we have that come in, and uh, we always we always expect those letters after our endorsements come out from the candidate who didn't get endorsed, saying I don't know what the IJ editor was smoking, but I can't believe they endorsed this person. And uh, we'll run those letters. They're perfectly fine. And I don't write letters to them afterwards saying, here's what I was smoking, or you were absolutely wrong. Um, what I'd like to let you know is that it's a very comfortable gathering, I think. Um, and we, uh, we try to make it uh, a chance for a candidate to uh, uh, tell us who they are to demonstrate their confidence and command of the local issues, and to uh, uh, demonstrate their ability to uh, uh, carry on civilly in a group setting. And we've had some cases where, uh, for, for instance, I think we had a race where it, between two candidates for the Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District, and our sit-down with them was the only time that they would actually meet because nobody's, nobody's going to go to a, a candidate's night for, for sewer district candidates, except for if it's in Novato. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had to basically put on a referee shirt and a whistle just to separate these guys. It, it was pretty brutal. Um, and the guy who behaved the worst is the guy who didn't get the endorsement. So that could be a, a lesson to you that you can be pointed, you can be sharp, you can be critical, but you've got to keep it within uh, a civil dialogue. And that, we'll ask about open and transparent government, and we will um, ask about the, uh, the budget. And, and probably for some of the supervisors' races, definitely we'll ask about housing. So any, any questions? Hi. You, you mentioned that you count heavily, you know, your, what the endorsements that you have that you bring with you. 
Um, some of the endorsement endorsers had already endorsed their people before the nomination period closed, and therefore those people who came into the race late didn't have an opportunity to um, you know, interview with those particular endorsers, right. which are the majority of them. So how much weight will you give? Well, you should point that out to me. But I mean, it's not uh, unusual for for somebody to endorse um, three people in a two candidate race, you know, or or uh, yeah. I mean, th there's been cases where where uh, where where multiple candidates have been uh, endorsed, and uh, uh, that many people can't win. Uh, but uh, you know, that's politics. But yeah, you should you know point it out or point out. We can tell generally in these meetings. Uh, believe me, we can tell a candidate's command of the issues, command of uh, their knowledge of, of a town, and command of the knowledge of the, the issues before uh, the town very quickly. I mean, we had one candidate who was uh, a very well, uh, very experienced politician who was running for College Marin Board, and uh, we asked about the um, a financial issue facing the uh, the school the, the college board, and uh, this candidate said she hadn't had time to read the college run budget. My um, my advice to you is at least take a look at the budget and know how much your agency spends and and uh, or needs uh, before uh, you get those questions because that's really not a good answer and. It, just shows that you didn't do your homework before you sat down with us. Mm -hmm. Hi. I'm wondering if you can uh, talk about what efforts you made to be fair to consider uh, challengers to an incumbent. Well, we've endorsed challengers, and, and we've sometimes we haven't endorsed incumbents. So, um, you know, we we know the incumbents, we know their records, we know their records good and bad. Um, so I, I think um, I, I think we try to we try to be fair, but we also you know we try to pick whom we believe will be the uh, best leader for um, for that particular seat, and it's not only for represent that area, but how they function with uh, with their fellow board members. Hey Brad. I can't remember the, the gentleman's name. Richard starts with an H. Uh, Richard Halstead. He's our political reporter who's covering right. the congressional race. Right. He sent out a, a series of questions last week uh -huh. that we responded to. Is that part of the, the endorsement process? Or is that uh, no. He's doing something different? No. That's his own trying to uh, figure out how he's going to cover 12 candidates running for 11 candidates or however many. 12, 12 candidates running for, uh, for Congress. So, uh, believe me, I've done it. I did the uh, race that... Uh, Woolsey uh, won in, I guess it's 92, right? And uh, you, uh, f uh, you know, uh, you're covering a, a debate at night, and they give you a hole of like 20 inches that you have to fit your story in. And you've got to uh, at least like mention each candidate, and it just, it's Im almost impossible. So Richard just wants to get an idea of where each candidate is on the various issues before he jumps into it. But it's, it's really hard to, when you have a, a field that large, to, uh, to give everybody some sort of uh, coverage. Uh, I mean, I had, I had the advantage of having uh, one candidate who pl had played uh, Jesus Christ in Ben-Hur and another candidate who was a, uh, um, an outspoken Republican Emigrant from uh, Ireland, uh, so and that was just the Republican side. <laughs> so anyway, it's it uh, you, you, the as you know the congressional race uh, uh, draws a, a lot of people, personalities, and uh, political agendas. Yeah, we were just up at the the uh, forum in Eureka on uh, this a couple of days ago, and it was amazing the different viewpoints of the of all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, it just hasn't, I mean, look, you got three candidates running, three or four candidates running for the Republican nomination for president. They're pretty divergent. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I noticed that you mentioned public pensions uh -huh. as one of your priority issues. Uh, does that mean that there's something along the lines of a litmus test for the uh, IJ on public pensions? Well, we do think that there is a problem. If you've read the IJ over the past four or five years, we think that there's a financial uh, dilemma facing uh, public agencies. And uh, we just we want to know what, what you think about it. You know, if, if you have a plan, tell us what your plan is. If you, uh, if you don't have a plan and you think everything's fine, that's fine too. We don't necessarily endorse everybody that we agree with. I mean, I, we endorsed somebody for a college board, uh, I guess it was two years ago, who we vehemently disagreed with over a policy over uh, whether tr trustees could speak or whether just this, that they would have to um, just at the, that the president of the college board was the only person who could speak to the press. And uh, we, we just disagreed wholeheartedly with her, but the candidate, sh the candidate she was running against um, really didn't have much of a clue of what was going on with the college. So we endorsed her. Uh, we also um, criticized her position on uh, whether uh, 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 elected public officials had given up their First Amendment rights when they got sworn in on the college board. And we put it like that. But uh, yeah, public, public pensions is an issue. Uh, that I think the IJ has been pretty straight that we're very concerned about. Uh, housing is another issue. I think the IJ has been uh, supportive of, of quotas, but not supportive of uh, uh, ABAG's formula for the way they set those quotas or, or whether they're realistic for, to the local geography. <coughs> mm -hmm. You also said California budget needs one more issue was uh, one of your priorities. Uh, open and transparent government. Yes. I mean, you're talking to an IJ editorial board that fought to uh, to open up the uh, uh, the county's payroll. Uh, it was a what six year fight uh, where we had to uh, uh, where we went to court. We um, did politics just to get the county to uh, to provide us with specifics about their payroll. But today, after the the scandal in Bell, um, all that most of that information is public record on the on the controllers, state controllers' about website. But uh, four years ago, uh, the county told us it was uh, personnel information, and we weren't entitled to it. So if you would like to come to the IJ editorial board and say, I like the old policy, uh, you know, okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, I've had, I've, we've had people sit in the corner and read the philosophy of Jesus Christ and not ask any questions or answer any questions. I mean, that's, we get, we get all types. We've, we've had, uh, there's, one, one, there's one woman who ran, ran for, for a supervisor and, uh, uh, I'd, we'd ask her a question, and she'd say, baloney, phooey, <laughs> that's malarkey. She didn't get our endorsement, but I guess she felt better. <laughs> yes, so Lisa. So uh, can members of the public attend? No. Uh, how about uh, students who are newspaper journalism students? Uh, maybe. I mean, we don't even allow the campaign managers to attend. So you're, you're on your own. And that came from uh, a time when one of the candidates came in with, who was a, uh, a seated legislator, and he came in with his aide who managed, who tried to do all the talking during the, most of the, uh, the meeting. And we just said, uh, well, you, we really don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from the candidate. But do you allow other members of the press, like the PacSun? No. PacSun, I think, generally does a... Uh, on a written question and answer format. They just don't have the staff to be able to, to do it personally, and I think they might make follow-up phone calls. I think they had interviews, personal interviews, as well as the question, at least last year they did. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for instance, like, I know, like, the, the press Democrat, I don't think they've interviewed a Republican candidate for Congress, the Assembly, or State Senate in, in several years, several cycles. I mean, I don't blame them, I mean, but we do invite them in, and um, in the past, it's been like one of Lynn Woolsey's, her, the debates that she claimed that she had. And she does really well at it. I don't know why she doesn't um, do more, but she's actually better than she thinks she is at, at those, uh, in those sessions. Uh, and a, an ability to, uh, to to participate in a civil dialogue on those issues, uh, so I don't have to go get my whistle and striped shirt. I mean, we had one. Uh, I think another sewer board race. I guess it's because they feel ignored. Um, where this guy was like headed for the endorsement. He was perfect. We'd been critical of him, but he was headed for the endorsement. And then he just started, just out of the blue, started attacking the IJ. And uh, I mean, we definitely weren't going to endorse the guy r running against him because he was not exactly fixed to the ground. But um, <laughs> but uh, this guy man basically managed to lose the endorsement just by not knowing when to be polite, civil, and to listen. He just decided he was just going to go on the attack. My, I put my cards over there so you can grab one and uh, feel free to give me a call. Uh, people call me before and after. If there's something that uh, during the session that you feel that uh, I should uh, know about that you didn't bring up, during our meeting, uh, feel free to give me a call because the other candidates are doing the same thing. Um, it's not a uh, just one time and over. Uh, in fact, there's some times where the candidates, some candidates have been so, who are pretty good candidates, have been so bad that I've uh, basically called them up and said, "Can we, can we meet and and uh, talk about the issues?" Where um, it's early in the campaign and they were total basket cases. And, um, so uh, we've done that. So, like I said, it's not. It's not. A, um, we 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 truly. One thing about the IJ editorial board is we truly respect and uh, and appreciate the fact that uh, the candidates are uh, stepping forward and uh, willing to uh, uh, to campaign and to uh, to serve if if elected and. Um, we believe that's kind of a, a basic bulwark of democracy, and uh, uh, I think we treat the candidates with respect. So, any other questions? Can I just add that it's, it's, I think people feel that they can't talk to you because it's like a lawyer talking to a judge. It's for, forbidden. That's not true. You're very accessible. I don't want to overflow yeah. your already very full email box, but opinion at marinij.com. He does respond. You can talk about things. and. Brad has his finger on the pulse of Marin politics for many decades now. Thank you. I can second that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Eduardo's at like 9 o'clock on Thursday, <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays. Like, that's our secret. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Am I on schedule?